Hi, I'm Yao from the InfoOS enablement team, and in this video, I will show you how to call Iron API from a Mongoose application. The objective of this video is to show you how you can use Mongoose as a client to call Iron API. This in turn allows any app developed in Mongoose to be an InfoOS connected app. What this means is your app can integrate with other InfoOS products like Data Lake, Coleman AI, IDM, Chat, and Mingo. I will show you where you can test your Iron API calls and the various methods to call them. The first video link goes over the technical details of Iron API and its OAuth 2 design. It will show examples of how to call Iron API from various clients. This image was taken from the Iron API video. As you can see, it has various user scenarios with multiple clients. Mongoose uses the resource owner of grant which authenticates seamlessly without user intervention. It does this by using a service user to, to impersonate a user or by enabling SSO. So as shown in the how to call Iron API video, we will first need to generate the Iron API file with our secrets and keys. Go into authorized apps within Iron API and click the add button. Give it a name like Mongoose Ion Connect. The type for Mongoose is a backend service. Fill in the description and hit save. After saving, you should be able to click the download credentials button. In the case that SSO was not enabled, we need to provide a service account for Mongoose to impersonate for the Ion API calls to succeed. Make sure the service user you impersonate has the permission to access the API you want. Otherwise, you will receive an unauthorized response. Click download afterwards, and you should see an Iron API file downloaded. After we have our Iron API file downloaded, the last step is to import it into Mongoose. Open up the Iron API servers form and click the import Iron API file button. In my case, I see that it already exists, but if it doesn't, import the file you just downloaded. An important thing to keep in mind is after every re-download of the credentials, you will have to re-import the Iron API file into Mongoose to keep the information up to date. After successfully importing the Iron API file, you can test your Iron API connection by opening the Iron API test invoke form. Let's look for a simple API to test our Iron API connection with. I'm going to go into InforMingle. And get my user's social details. I can see my successful response here. Now let's try to replicate this call within Mongoose. Mongoose expects a certain number of parameters to be filled in for the call to work. Suite, method, HTTP method, parameters, content type, and timeout needs to be given a value. In our case, the suite will be mingle. Our method will be the social service user detail. So let's fill that in. and we're doing an HTTP GET method. Mongoose takes in parameters as an array of JSON. Each JSON entry should have three keys, name, type, and value. So for this call, I want to add an accept header the name would be accept. Type would be header. And the value would be the response, the type of the response we're getting, which is application XML. I will leave the content type blank because that's used to tell us the type 
of our payload for post requests. After filling in the necessary information and clicking invoke, we can see that our response code is 200 and the content we receive prove that our connection is successful. So I've just shown you a successful Iron API query to Mingo. Let's try to do something a bit more interesting like get images stored in IDM. This form tells Iron API what to query and returns a list of images that I set the carousel with. Let's take a look at how Iron API is called within this form. I'm now in my earlier form in design mode. Let's take a look at his events. I see three event handlers in standard form pre-display that are triggered on form load. Let's take a look at what this form script method set IDM bars does. If you remember the test form I used earlier, I had to set these values for Iron API to know what to query. The list of variables you see here are all the input variables that Iron API consumes. As long as these are set correctly, Iron API should work. After setting the input variables, the next event is a call to the Mongoose Iron API method. Going into the parameters, you can see I am passing in my input variables and expecting four output variables. The variable var carousel response is bound to this multi-line edit. And that's pretty much the two steps you need to take to use Iron API on your form. First, set the input variables for your call and then invoke the method passing in those input variables. I've now shown you how to do different GET requests to Mango and IDM. The methodology is the same for any other GET requests. Now let's take a look at how to do a POST. On this form, I have three ways of triggering an IAN API POST to IDM. One do the form, one do AES, and one do the custom assembly. Let's take a look at the form first. There is a post event attached to the button that first sets the input variables and then invokes the Iron API method, just like the GET request. The main difference between the post and the GET are the input variables, HTTP method, parameters, and content type. In the parameters for our GET example, we only had one JSON entry specifying the accept header. Our POST request requires a second JSON entry telling the API what to post via the body payload. The body format is taken from IDM Swagger doc and I recommend testing the POST there first. I set the content type to be application JSON because that is what I am passing in the body value. So now that you've seen how it works, let's see it actually work. I can see in my responses that I'm getting a 200 HTTP and the content that has been posted. If I go into document management now and refresh, I can see my post. Now let's see what the post to AES button does. It has an event listener that generates an application event. This is a custom application event that I created. Now if I go into the events form and filter for that event, I can see that it has one event action associated with it, which does a call IDO method. The action is calling the ion API method and passing it the same parameters like I did in the form. Again, if I go back to my form and now hit the post to AES, go back into document management and refresh. 
I can now see that I have two pulses to IDM. So besides calling the INA API directly on the form or do AES, the third way is to call it do custom assembly. I can see here there's a method call to a method attached to an IDO called post to IDM. Going into that method call, I can see that that post to IDM method is coming from the IDM post assembly. If I open up the IDO custom assemblies form and open that specific custom assembly, view the source code. I can see the post to IDM method. In here, it is setting the INA API input variables just like we did with the on the form and in AES and invokes the INA API method. And now all that's left is to click our dirt button and see the dirt post in our document management. And there you have it. Three ion posts to IDM using three different methods in Mongoose.